very early on in my career, I was a due for promotion, not just due for promotion, but I was due for promotion in a way that is accelerated. Um, and the females of the office got together to petition, not about the whole system of promotion, but Saidia, which I found really bizarre at the time. But I also, so, so there's that also, that's not just, I think, Queen Bee syndrome, but there's also sometimes I think women kind of conflicting with each other and not recognizing what the real issue, what the real problem is but kind of singling out and putting his face to it that actually had nothing to do with your lack of advancement um, or other. I think not necessarily, going back to the Queen B one, you, you do have situations actively where we feel as though because we have struggled as women to get there, we somehow should be the only people should enjoy that spot. There's that fear or of the next batch coming in. And I think that's hugely detrimental, of course, because you can only improve and change. You contribute your share and you move forward and allow the next batch to come in. That's how we only succeed collectively. There is no point you going through the door and then slamming it shut behind you. That just doesn't make sense at all. And unfortunately, that's why, and perhaps the panels at least might want to discuss this as well. Most of us, I'm sure our mentors have been men, not women. It's been men that will push you to the next spot, that as soon as an interview comes in, they'll say, yeah, you can do this. Oh, I don't think I'm qualified, you're qualified, go and do it. Even if you're not, I like it till you make it. Go and learn and research. It's very rare to have women pull you up from the bottom. And I think again, if we collectively hear beyond women that are listening to this, make that commitment to say, we will do every year, I will push so to something. And I think that narrative will then slowly begin to change.